Hey guys, I'm Uprops, and today I'm going to show you how I made my Dawn Guard helmet from Skyrim using some craft foam, hot glue, and a whole lot of paint. So the first thing that I did was I went through and cut out the dome template, and I just made this by putting some duct tape and tin foil over one of my 3D printed helmets, and then I just took the pattern off that. Uh, the Dawn Guard helmet does have some seam lines on the helmet, and so I tried my best to match the seam lines of this pattern to that of the helmet, and so that's why the seam lines are the way they are on this. Normally I have the pieces a little bit more on an even side, but one of them is clearly larger than the other. And then I just glued them together using some hot glue and gently gluing all the seams together, trying to reduce the amount of hot glue that squeezes out of the end of it. After getting both of the halves glued together, I went through and glued the uh, both of them together just using some hot glue. Um, one thing that I found is if you let the hot glue cool for a couple seconds and then go to stick the two halves together, it kind of works like contact cement and they just stick to each other. So uh, that's a pretty nice trick that I found. I'm not sure if it works on thicker foams or even in normal temperatures because right now it's like 40 degrees out and so the hot glue cools almost like instantly so I'm not sure if it'd work in like the summer or whatnot where it's like 90 degrees out but it's working for me so it's a pretty cool thing that I found. After gluing that, I went through and glued a couple pieces of foam around the sides of it just to build up the base of the helmet. And I used a couple 12 by, or maybe I think it's 18 by 11 sheets or something like that to get it all the way around just so that I had a little bit of extra material to work with. And yeah, you just have to glue this on slowly and carefully so that you don't accidentally mess up the uh, alignment on it. Not that my alignment's perfect or anything. And then I went through and cut out kind of this face shield shape and went through and glued that on. This was a really rough guesstimate and I ended up having to trim it a lot. So just make sure you look at reference images when gluing your stuff on or making your stuff anyways. So you don't have to like heat it up and peel it off like I did. I had to do that like four or five times just because I couldn't get the thing to look right. And then I went through and glued on this little uh, piece that goes over the nose area just to create that little uh, metal bar that's on the helmet. I just glued that on with some hot glue. After that, I started gluing on all of the little intricate details that go on the faceplate, like that little um, narrow piece that goes above the eyes, kind of looks like eyebrows in my opinion, and I glued that on on both sides. And then the decorative details that go on the forehead um, that little circular piece, I forgot to record it, but I made that just cut in a circle out of foam and then making the raised details just by putting on some hot glue. So if you guys wonder how I did that, that's how I did it. For the forehead details, I decided to use 2mm foam instead of 3mm, which is most what most of the helmet's made out of, just so that it looks a little bit different than the rest of the helmet and kind of stands out just by being a little thinner. Um, I also kind of ran out of my thicker stuff, so that's another reason. But if you're using the 2mm, you want to make sure not to hit it with the uh, 
tip of the hot glue gun because it will show through on the other side since it's so thin. Just a little something that I ran into, so if that's helpful to you guys. I then went through and got out my wood burning tool. This is like a soldering iron wood burning tool, multi purpose tool thing, and went through and damaged the edges of everything and then added some scarring too. And I just drag the edge of this across all of the surfaces um alternatively you could use like a dremel bit or something and do this but i find that it's easier to use my wood burner because it's not rotating at like 10,000 rotations a minute um it also kind of it does release fumes so you know wear a face mask or something so that you don't breathe that in but i, I feel that it gives a better look than the dremel personally i don't know um you do want to be careful because you can easily burn through your project with this and i've done that before but as long as you're careful and just lightly touch it you should be fine um it took me like 10 minutes to go through and just get all the edges but i feel that it makes it look a lot cleaner than if i didn't otherwise and then i went through and made all the rivets and i mixed up a mixture of mod podge and some black paint and put that in a little syringe and then went through and did dropped a little bit in every place that there's a rivet and i marked that with just some sharpie and uh, this helps create that little raised rivet detail. It didn't work out as great as I hoped, and I ended up going over and doing hot glue rivets, which I'm not the hugest fan of, but these just didn't stick up as much as I was hoping. They kind of drooped down and absorbed in the thing. I'm sure if you had sealed, if I had sealed the helmet, then it probably wouldn't have been a big deal and it would have shown through, but it didn't, so. I used some flexible filler to fill in some of these seam lines and some of the gaps and stuff between the layers of foam. Um, this stuff isn't sandable, the stuff that I'm using, but if you can find sandable, I would totally recommend just because it gives it a little bit more of a better look when you can sand it flush. I just ended up having to like use my fingers and stuff to wipe it away from the areas that it was high. And I mean, it ended up looking decent, but I wish I could have gotten a little bit more of a cleaner finish on the seam lines. After the putty had dried, I went through and sealed the helmet in some gloss Mod Podge. This just gives it a little bit more of a better sheen, especially when I go to paint a black layer. Um, I brushed it on at first and then went through and dabbed it on and this creates a nice little texture. I did that on my Solaire of Astora helmet and uh, a few other helmets that I never ended up filming for but I just feel like it creates a really nice metal texture, especially if you're gonna end up weathering the helmet at all. So if you guys end up using that, it, I think it looks really cool. Um, I, th I think a few other people use this technique too, just using the Mod Podge to create texture. I know you can mix like cinnamon or baking soda in and it gives it a really nice, uh, more thicker texture, but I didn't end up doing that, so. After a couple coats of that Mod Podge, I went through and painted it black. You could mix black paint in your Mod Podge and then you could seal it and paint it at the same time, but the Mod Podge kind of dilutes the black paint, so you have to do a few more layers of that than you would of just doing black paint and Mod Podge. And so that's why I just do Mod Podge and then black paint. Um, uh, I did a couple coats of this black paint just to get the uh, all the areas covered and to get a nice clean coverage over everything. Um, I also stippled this on after I brushed it just to, again, give it a little bit more of a texture. Um, but you could totally just brush it on as long as you do thin enough brush strokes and stuff. You should be able to avoid brush strokes on this, especially since you're painting metallic over this. I would just be careful of brush strokes just so that it'll end up showing through your project. That's always a thing when like brush strokes show through and someone's like, oh, hey, did you hand paint this or spray paint it? And you're like, I hand paint it. Um, Anyways, just kind of be careful with your brush strokes and whatnot. Mm -hmm. 
After all the black paint had dried, I went through it and mixed up some silver paint and then dabbed that on with a sponge, just going through and lightly hitting everything with it. Um, if you do light enough coats, you should be able to keep that nice texture that you build up with the Mod Podge and all the battle damage and stuff. But I unfortunately went a little too heavy and covered most of that. So I think I, I'm pretty sure I did a black wash. I actually can't remember right now but I just did a really light black wash just to bring most of that back. Um, so if you accidentally cover most of it up or some of it, you can just do a black wash in areas just to bring it back. After the silver paint, I went through and mixed up some different shades of brown and orange and just dabbed this all over the helmet just to create a rust. I tried to match my um, uh, concept pieces uh, pretty well, but I think it went a little heavier than those, so um, and just be careful with your weathering. It's really easy to overdo it. Not that I overdid it, but I just think I didn't match what the in-game art looks like, so uh, kind of be careful with that. But I just dabbed this on, going from like a dark brown to a medium to an orange to like a yellow color. And just going selectively once you get up to those lighter shades. And overall, I'm really happy with how this turned out. I feel that it's pretty symmetrical, which was what I was hoping it would be. And I really like how it looks pretty much like the one in-game or in Skyrim. Uh, there's a few details that I didn't quite match exactly. But overall, I think it's a pretty good semblance of it. Um, I might make a full armor for this, I'm not positive yet, but uh, it's definitely something that I might end up doing. Um, so the black paint I used was paid for by my Patreons, so if you guys want to join that, that would be great so I can buy more stuff for my shop and whatnot with that. I uh, really appreciate those of you who are my Patreons, so thank you guys. Uh, if you guys don't mind like and subscribing, that would be awesome. Just hit 500 subs recently, and so that is wicked. So really appreciate you all for that. Uh, let me know what you guys want me to make, and I'll try making it. Um, see you guys next vid, and happy crafting. Bye.